Hello and welcome to the Heart of Markness podcast, episode 41, the topic of which is Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin, you say, Mark, so we're going on a bit of a stretch and a deviation? Yes, we are. Instead of talking about Led Zeppelin this week, I figured we'd take a little diversion, a little field trip, if you will, and instead of talking about Led Zeppelin, we're going to talk about Led Zeppelin. So, if it's not what you expected... I, I don't blame you. Just turn the podcast off, throw your phone in the river, drive off the road, whatever you need to do to deal. But this week, we are going to be discussing Led Zeppelin. Sorry for any confusion. Anyways, Led Zeppelin. Not only Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin in 1971. On September 13th und 14th, 1971, in Berkeley, California, where all the hippies were promoting free speech and protesting for free speech, and now, 50 years later, completely against free speech. Whatever. It's all good. Zeppelin's awesome. And so are you. Guten Tag. Well, let's just jump right into it, shall we? In 1971, as you probably know, Led Zeppelin could do no wrong. They didn't have bad concerts, really. They didn't have bad nights, really. Jimmy was amazing, Robert was amazing, Jonesy was amazing, and Bonzo was amazing. And on this little run in Berkeley, California, um, they were, surprise, amazing. And why I cho- here's why I chose uh, these nights, the 13th and the 14th. Real, real simple, because somebody on the four badge holders only mailing list dropped a... Uh, a mix of these shows, the 13th and the 14th, that were put together and mastered um, by a Led Zeppelin fan, an excellent remasterer, uh, Dad Gad, D-A-D-G-A-D. And his, his moniker is based on one of the tunings, alternate tunings that Jimmy uses for his guitars. So I saw the uh, post, I grabbed the show, listened to it, and said, wow, I forgot how great the show was. I mean, I always kind of knew. But... um. I said, ah, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, I have a topic, and here we are. And uh, the only thing that makes this really different than any other show is that it's a, a conflation of the 13th and the 14th to create one complete Led Zeppelin concert, because the recordings from both nights are uh, incomplete, so Dad Gad just kind of shuffled the best of both together to make one complete show, and he did a hell of a job. There are a, uh, there there is a difference in sound quality because they were, both shows were not taped by the same folks. But uh, the thirteenth has uh, the lesser sound quality, so I'm going to not feature that as much. Although it's still it's still completely listenable. Uh, the fourteenth has really excellent sound quality, and it was released. I think both shows were released on vinyl. Although I know the fourteenth was released on vinyl on uh, the trademark of quality label. And it had that cover, um, if you're familiar with bootlegs, it was called Going to California. And it had a drawing of the Zeppelin boys in one of those little uh, Dumbo amusement park rides where you sit in Dumbo and go around in circles at like Disney World uh, inside of one of those. And if that image brings a little click of uh, shock of recognition to you, as Melville says, um, then you'll know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you don't. It's okay. But let's get hopping, because my lovely daughter, if you have kids, you understand. You're sick all the time. My daughter was with me this weekend, had a great weekend, unbelievable weekend. God, I love that kid. And then, of course, as soon as she went home, she got super duper sick. And now I'm I'm not super duper sick, but I went home from work early and slept until uh, now, which is about 730. And I'm going to do this show, and then I'm going to go back to sleep. So... It's going to be a quicker and more direct one. Thank God! I know. I heard you. I heard you. So let's hop into it, shall we? Let's kind of stick roughly to the concert order on these. I'm going to play three songs for you, because I love you. And the first of which is going to be Heartbreaker, because it's awesome. This would have been the second show of the night, right after Immigrant Song. And uh goes a little bit like this. Oh, it's from the 14th, so it's going to sound really, really good. Enjoy, my friends. See you in a bit. Let's go. 
You should have come last night. Thanks to bootleggers, Robert, we didn't have to. And now here we are, 49 years later, listening to your music. Cool as shit, isn't it, guys? Just the fact that almost half a century ago, in some say cases more than half a century ago, intrepid people recorded concerts illicitly and then traded or sold them. And now here we are and we have these records of these great times. Otherwise, all we'd have for live Led Zeppelin would be The Song Remains the Same, movie and album, How the West Was Won, and the DVD set, <clears throat> which is a lot. Well, it's not a lot, but it's, it's still significant in quite a bit. But we didn't have any of that aside from The Song Remains the Same until 2003. So all this stuff that's out there is is their little um, flickers of light, like a night sky that illuminate these eras of the band that otherwise would just not be recorded. We would have, you know, the books, Hammer of the Gods and things like that, describing the tours and saying, wow, 1971 was awesome. But we wouldn't have any any uh, sonic documentation of that other than, well, the BBC recordings, too. All right, I guess I'm full of shit. But there's a hell of a lot more out there illicitly than there is licitly. And it's great. And it's traded freely. And it don't cost nothing. And it makes people happy. And I'm a people. I'm happy listening to it. You're a people. You're happy listening to it. So yippee. And you get to hear these guys just raw. Without overdubs. Without studio polish. Without fixing mistakes. Nothing. Just some dude bringing a tape recorder to a show and recording it. Warts and all. And I love it. I love it. And it even, you know, I don't even care if the quality's a little dodgy if the performance is fire. So I hope you agree with me. And that was Heartbreaker. Always a good one. And uh, the boys are just, um, I think this might be the last show of the U.S. tour. Um, if not, it's very close to it. And then uh, on the this is the 14th of September. And then on the 23rd of September, a mere nine days later, they start their Japanese tour, which is is fucking on fire. And there are two podcasts about that, Osaka 71 of mine, two episodes that you can go back and listen to, and they are smoking. It's among the best shows Led Zeppelin ever did. And if you haven't heard them yet, I uh, implore you to go back and listen to those old episodes from Osaka 71, because it will strip the paint off your car. It's so good. Is that a saying, Mark? I don't know. It is now. What are you going to do? I'm on injured reserve here. And as such, let's move right along to Since I've Been Loving You. I'm trying to focus more on uh, the the guitar songs now, because it's like, if I focus completely on the jams, if I just played a whole lot of love from every show, I mean, it wouldn't be that bad because it's like, oh, they did this song. They did this song. They did this song. They did Gallows Pole. Um, But it would kind of get redundant. And I mean, I know we're dealing with a handful of songs performed live by Zeppelin. So I'm trying to mix it up and keep it fresh while still going, you know what? Yes, you're going to hear another heartbreaker. Yes, you're going to hear another since I've been loving you or communication breakdown. Why? Because it's fucking awesome and it's worth listening to. And it's not the same as the others you've heard. So in that vein... Let's move along to Since I've Been Loving You, also from the, th- the 14th, although there are snippets of the 13th spliced in here and there, and you could tell when the sound quality shifts, um, which it did in Heartbreaker, but I don't think it had snippets of the 13th. I don't know why it did that, but there was definitely a shift in sound stage and sound quality there in the song. It was a little jarring, for which I apologize. But anyways, here we go. Since I've Been Loving You, Led Zeppelin. September 14th, in a little bit of the 13th, 1971, Hot of Machness. Enjoy.
God damn it, I love hearing Bonzo play drums. He was the star of that. I mean, Jimmy, obviously, but Bonzo, right there, all the time, making it sound effortless and uh, propping up Jimmy's playing. And sometimes he's pulling, sometimes he's pushing, sometimes he's lifting him up in the air like a, like a gymnast. Uh, it's incredible. And uh, I, you may not know this about, the, about me, dear listener, but uh, I love this band. Can you tell? Well, I think so. And also that Heartbreaker, I loved it because it was very similar to the one he did in Osaka a couple weeks later. Um, he did a little bit of the 59th Street Bridge song, you know, da 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 feeling groovy. Went a little bit into that Bach. Da 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 which I think Jethro Tull did as well. Um, you know, everything in the kitchen sink. That was the 70s, especially the early 70s when uh, it was all artistic expression, man. So I hope you liked it. Hope you liked Since I've Been Loving You. If you didn't, this this might not be the podcast for you, friend, um, because these are great performances by a great band. Sometimes I get into some of the more iffy ones where it's like they were not really on their best this night. But uh, no, Led Zeppelin in 1971, uh, if you don't like it. It's not me, it's you. So, I assume you like it if you've made it this far into the episode. We're coming up on 26 minutes, or more than 26 minutes, and you're still here. So let's plow along, because you're not here to listen to me. So, the last show I would like, I'm sorry, the last song I would like to play for you is from The Night Before, which is the 13th. It is of a lesser sound quality than the two songs you've listened to so so far. It's still fine. You'll still dig it. It'll just sound like it's coming out of an AM radio as opposed to an FM stereo. It's all good. Don't panic. Your children will be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. So what I would like to present to you is Communication Breakdown, the last song of the night, final encore and uh there's a bit of gallows pole thrown in it's mostly robert singing it and the band playing uh it's your thing it's your thing do what you want to do that song they do in communication breakdown which i fucking love and uh, they did it on the bbc sessions and jimmy of course cut that part out because uh he didn't want to pay the royalties for it which pisses me off as a human being, but I also understand it from a business standpoint because even those little snippets of songs, they have to pay a lot of money to use. So it is what it is. And again, if it weren't for the illicit recordings, none of us would know this. So let's all raise a glass to the tapers and the bootleggers and the rogues. Let's hear it for the rogues and the scoundrels. Ah, <sighs> Thank you. All right, how about this? Communication Breakdown, September 13th, 1971, with a couple other songs thrown in because I love you, because Led Zeppelin loves you, and because you love Led Zeppelin. Here you go. I'll see you in a few.
And with that, we get to the end of another episode. Communication Breakdown. Wasn't it fun? Wasn't it fun? It sounds like the boys are having fun on stage. It sounded very professional. It sounded very technically on top of things, and it sounded still fun. Not joyous. It wasn't a joyous performance, but it was fun. I like fun. The world needs more fun. And thanks to Led Zeppelin, and thanks to bootleggers and tapers, we have it. So thanks for listening. I think uh, next week, I think, um, at least as it stands now, I'm going to lean more towards a 1977 show. Because um, I think I've only done a couple of episodes on the 77 tour. And we're on episode 41. So it's underrepresented, and yet it was their biggest tour. Uh, it's just not my favorite. So I think uh, I'm going to try and find some... Uh, exceptional 77 material to present to you tomorrow uh, next week rather not tomorrow and uh, that means longer songs so maybe only two because 77 was uh the year of the marathon so well we'll see we'll cross that bridge when we come to it because as you guys know um just because i say we're going to do 77 doesn't mean at all that it's going to be a 77 show by the time next week rolls around but what it is time for is Patreon, Patreon, that's right, you can't get out of it, it's time for the PBS pledge drive, don't you want a tote bag? Um, well, the, the, the American, the United States listeners will understand that, uh, the rest of the world probably not, so, sorry. But, uh, first of all, social media, follow me on Twitter, at Heart of Markness, I will talk to you, you will talk to me, we will be chums. Facebook, same thing, join the Facebook group, Heart of Markness. Some good people there. You have a little community. Talk to me. Talk to them. I'll talk to you. It'll be great. And Patreon. I now have three patrons, which is fucking humbling and gratifying and exciting and just amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let me get the names right. I'm going to bring it up so I don't fuck things up. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Thank you very much, too. Avi or Avi, Jeremy and Mimo. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. It means a lot. It means a lot. Um, your contributions have taken pressure off me in getting more bandwidth for the file sharing and things like that. Um, love it. Love you. Thank you so much. And because you are patrons, you're going to get the patron-only podcast that comes out once a month. And that is what I'm going to be doing this weekend. And um, I don't know what it's going to be about. I have an idea. It's going to be super secret. If you want to know what this is about and get the super secret podcasts, which are even better because they're naughtier, kind of, um, become a patron. Get to patreon.com slash heart of markness, I think, or just search for me. And, uh, you know. Help support the podcast. It really, 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 really helps. As you can see, I have three patrons, not 3,000. So it really does affect me. I really do notice. It really does contribute and make things easier and better. And uh, I'll give you a shout out every week. So take a look at that. And if you're of a mind to, support the podcast. Why not? Everybody else is doing it. Everybody else. Everybody. Really, Mark? You just said there were only three. It's only been a week. Give it time. I haven't even posted it on Twitter yet. My God. And there's also heartofmarkness.com in addition to the Twitter and the Facebook. I do need to update that. I am behind on that again. Um, I worked so hard and long, that's what she said, on the Patreon and not uh, trying to look like a, a dolt or a village idiot uh, that I neglected the website. So I, maybe I'll work on that this weekend too. So patrons, expect your first uh, exclusive podcast this weekend and everybody else expect the regular old heart of Markness podcast next Thursday night or Friday morning or if you're in Australia I don't know then I guess it already happened last week or something you guys time is different <laughs> all right so let's see have we covered everything yes Led Zeppelin is good check give me money check follow me on social media check me, 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 check. And Led Zeppelin is awesome again. Yes, there we go. The compliment sandwich. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate your support. 
and I will see you or hear from you. Or I won't actually I won't see or hear from you. You'll hear from me. Yes, one way street. That's how we like it. Ah, on the balcony talking to the masses, addressing, commanding. <sighs> one day, one day. All right, friends, I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Heart of Markness. Adios.